What's up everyone, Takedown here, back with another video. As you guys know, I really enjoy doing this pet peeve series where I basically am sharing with you different things that piss me off on different topics. And today, I'm really excited because as you guys know, I'm a gamer. So today I'm gonna to be doing a gamer pet peeves. What pisses me off whenever it comes to gaming? Let's get right into this. Okay, so I'm hoping at least for the most part, a lot of gamers feel the same way towards some of these, but if you don't agree with some of them, let me know down below. But the first one here, recently I have forgot about until I recently got my PlayStation 2. And that is forgetting to manually save on the PlayStation 2 because you're so used to the PlayStation 4 doing the auto save feature. Now, it happened to me a few times when I first got my PlayStation 2 again, but now I've kind of learned if you are going to play a game that requires saving to remember to save, especially if you did a couple hours of gaming, you will lose all of that. It doesn't auto save like the PlayStation 2 and it happened to me a few times right whenever I got it, but now I've kind of remembered to be able to do it. But this used to be the worst thing for me, especially on the PlayStation 2, for example, if the power went out or I've heard rumors and I've heard other people share stories where they used to have a PlayStation 2 but never owned a memory card and they used to try to leave their system on 24 seven all the time, constantly on. And then of course your mother would go and turn it off. For me, I never had that problem because I always had two or three memory cards. I don't get why people didn't go out and just get a memory card because of course your parents want to save money on the electricity bill. But for me, this is something that used to be so frustrating to me, especially if you forgot to do it. The next time you go and play, you didn't. You, you realize you didn't actually do it and you lost all your progress that you did that day. Honestly, it used to suck for me, but I'm basically trying to teach myself to make sure you remember to save now that I have the PlayStation 2 again. The next one here is when you want to play a game but there is an update. So number one for me that this constantly happens to is Need for Speed. Other online games like Call of Duty, GTA sometimes, even though I don't play GTA anymore. Uh, other games like that, especially new games. If the game has just come out, there's always updates for the first couple months constantly. So usually whenever it comes to Fortnite, it is once a week or sometimes even twice a week. And you have to wait a little while before you can go and play your game. This for me, whenever I was working, would be the number one pet peeve in my opinion whenever it came to gaming because whenever I'd come home from work, I'd want to go and play a game and to realize there's an update, that means I'd have to wait till the next day to go and play it because I'd have to work the next day. I couldn't stay up all night waiting for it to download. It used to suck, but that's definitely one of the more frustrating things, especially if you have bad internet like I do. I don't have the greatest internet, so it does take me a lot longer. Sometimes for like a Fortnite update, it'd be an hour. Other games, it might be six hours. It all depends on the game and how big it is for the update. The next one for me is when your game starts lagging. And the thing whenever it used to be online gaming with friends and that, whoever was lagging the most used to always be called uh, and told that they have the McDonald's Wi-Fi, which was always funny. But for me, somebody that has bad internet, Mine doesn't seem to lag too often. Usually if it lags, it doesn't always mean that it's the ser uh, that it's your internet. Sometimes it is the servers, which to me is the most common thing now, especially with Rockstar, Call of Duty, all the ones like that. Typically it is a server issue. If you go online, you'll be able to see that it is in a server issue and everyone's experienced this. But for me, it sucks whenever you start lagging, especially if you want to game. If it lags for too long, you just get fed up and you don't want to play that game anymore. So it honestly does suck, but it does happen, especially for us gamers. The next one here is when you get a new game, but have no space to download it. Now for me, I don't have that problem anymore because I have went out and purchased an external hard drive for my PlayStation 4. And whenever the PlayStation 5 comes out, or if I want to use that for any other device, I can just simply unplug it and plug it into another device. I can use it for any system pretty much is why I wanted this one. I didn't want to get an internal one because that meant I'd only be able to use it for that specific device. So that's definitely something that doesn't happen to me anymore because if I want to go and get a game, which I always download the free games every month, 
I always seem to get games on the PlayStation Store whenever they're on sale. Or if there is a new game that comes out that I really want, whenever it's on sale, I'll go and purchase it. So I never have that problem with space, but whenever I didn't have my external hard drive, I used to always have to sit there and think, what game can I delete? Which game do I not play the most anymore? And I'll just go and delete it off my system. That means I'll never get a chance to play it anymore, but that was the only way I used to be able to do it back then. Now I'm able to keep all the games on my PS4 until my external hard drive gets full, which right now it's a three terabyte hard drive. It's about halfway full, but it's gonna be a long time until it's full. So uh, the next one here is when you did what it said to complete a trophy, but the trophy doesn't show. I did this recently on Onrush. Onrush was a free game a couple months ago. It came out in 2018 and it became a free PS Plus game in 2019, I wanna say. Uh, maybe January, maybe it was at the end of 2018. I can't remember. But for this game, there's one trophy which is called the Vomit Comet, the Vomit Comet. And to do that, basically, uh, you had to do a barrel roll and basically rotate four complete times and then land to be able to trigger this trophy. And on Onrush, it is extremely hard because there's only one map that lets you to do this, only one spot on that map and only one vehicle. And for me, I did it at least 20 to 30 times, maybe even more, and I eventually got it to do it. But I remember while trying to do that trophy, I did it at least twice where I counted each time that it spinned and it didn't trigger the trophy. So by the third time that I actually got it to do it after playing it for a couple hours, I got the trophy to pop. But some video games, you know you did it, but the trophy doesn't pop. In certain video games where it's kind of a progress one that once you pass a certain point, if you didn't do that trophy, you can't get it until you do a second playthrough. If those trophies don't pop, it used to suck. But for me, I never really had that problem too often. Uh, the next one is EB Games trade in credit. Now for me, I was never one to go and trade my games in. I used to have a, a friend that anytime that a new game would come out, he would go and trade a bunch of his old games to be able to get the new game. Now for me, you would make a lot more money back if you just posted those video games online and tried to sell them yourself. EB Games and GameStop in the US gives you almost next to nothing for your video games. The number one thing for me is whenever I got my PS4, it included Black Ops 4, which I knew I didn't want. They were only going to give me $30 credit for Black Ops 4 if I gave it back to them. Then they were going to be able to go and turn that around and sell it for $80 because over here, a brand new video game in Canada costs $80. So they would literally, they were going to give me $30 for it and then they were going to be able to go and turn it or turn it over, sell it for $80 because it was still sealed. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. So I went home and a week later, I sold it online for $50 on my own. So for me, it's not worth going and trading into EB Games. I would honestly just wait. And that's what I do. I wait until something's on sale and then go and do it because you get next to nothing when you trade in value. The next one is for me, console wars, PlayStation versus Xbox. And then even more so now, gaming in general console versus PC. I just don't understand it. I don't get why there is console wars. In my opinion, play whatever system you want. If you want to play consoles, go ahead and play consoles. If you want PC, play PC. If you want PlayStation, play PlayStation. If you want Xbox, play Xbox. To me, I don't argue with people that agree with Xbox and I don't say that PlayStation is better because I've only owned PlayStation. But the reason why I prefer PlayStation over Xbox and over PC is because I'm used to the controllers. I'm used to the way that PlayStation works. I've always used PlayStation whenever I was young. I had a PlayStation 1 up to my current PlayStation 4. I've had every system. I've used every system. I've played on every system. I'm used to PlayStation. There's no point in my opinion to switch over to Xbox now because it would take me a while to get used to it. So for me, I'd rather just stick with something that I'm used to and that I enjoy playing, I enjoy my PlayStation, but that doesn't mean I go and tell somebody that is an Xbox fan that PlayStation is better. I've only ever had PlayStation. Now I prefer PlayStation over Xbox for other reasons as well, but to me, I don't get console wars and I don't get PC versus consoles. Play whatever you want to play. If you want both PlayStation and Xbox, if you are a collector or you want some of the PlayStation and console exclusives, 
go ahead and play what you want. I just don't agree with console wars. And the last pet peeve that I have whenever it comes to gaming is microtransactions in video games. I honestly hate them. I never purchase them. You guys probably know what I'm talking about. Grand Theft Auto, buying the shark, shark cards, uh, games like Call of Duty or anything like that that uh, has you buy coins within the game, virtual currency in specific games. And if they have you purchase it that way, I hate that. And especially Fortnite, where the only thing that you can get with this stuff is cosmetic stuff. It doesn't affect how you play the game. It doesn't give you any advantages. But Fortnite makes a killing on microtransactions where the game was free. So I do understand that, but I've never spent a dime on Fortnite and I'm pretty good at Fortnite. I do enjoy playing the game and I'm decent at it, but it doesn't give you any advantages. So I'm 100% against microtransaction. I hate them. Never purchased anything microtransactions before just because I'd rather earn the money in the game. Microtransactions, you don't basically lose too much if you don't get microtransactions. You still get to enjoy the game. You just might miss out on some exclusive stuff or certain things like that. For GTA, I used to always make my money. Me and my friends used to make millions of money on there. Why go and waste real money to buy fake money? I never agreed with that. I never used to take part in that. I honestly was always frustrated with that. And that was the worst thing about video games, especially now. A lot of video games are going more microcurrency forward. And I hate that. But to me, if they're going to go more microcurrency forward, the game itself should be a little bit cheaper, in my opinion. Because if they are expecting to make a lot more money with microcurrencies, they can charge a little bit less for the video games themselves, make more people purchase the games, and that would uh, get more people to purchase the games and then possibly spend my money in micro uh, transactions. So these are my pet peeves. I also would like to include squeakers. I only do online gaming with my friend Jack and we'll basically go on the mic that way. Otherwise, I am not on the mic and I usually have my mic where you can hear people talk to you turned off on whatever game I'm playing. Usually I'll go into a party on the PlayStation, but I won't connect my mic and that will basically block out listening to anybody online. So I typically don't listen to anybody online unless Jack's online. I'll connect my mic that way. But these have been some of my pet peeves. Comment down below if there's any that you are as a gamer. It is a pet peeve of yours whenever it comes to gaming. I might have missed a few, but these are my top pet peeves whenever it comes to gaming. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please take care. Peace.